I'm going to derive my own work, okay? Um, I claim this is a gravity equation, uh, and I'm using exactly the same te technique as before. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, very few people think this is true, but that's not because, it's because I don't, I, I, I haven't been able to reach it um, for a bunch of social reasons. But anyway, let's see, let's see how similar it is to, to before. Oh, so we're going to construct a complete set of first order changes of a potential, okay? And, but this time I'm going to use that hyper complex product. And you'll notice that I, I'm using these, these, uh, these yellows uh, here and there. It's like, why? Because I'm really using exactly the same slides, okay? <laughs> I said I don't want to work too much. Um, I'm using the exact slides and I'm figuring out where the signs change. And what's amazing is that exactly half the signs are going to change. Well, actually, this, this part is exactly the same. And that's actually the key element to why the, the Higgs, uh, what we now, might not need the Higgs. But in here, I, with an E field, I had six minus signs. This time, I've only got three minus signs. And with this symmetric curl, that means they all got the same signs. With the B field, they used to have half, right? Uh, half positive, half negative. So it is, I think there's like 48, uh, so 40, 24 terms, exactly 12 of them change. So I think, wow, that, that would be very convenient if it worked out. Um, so, again, the most complete uh, hyper complex derivatives, is that connected to gravity? That is my hypothesis, and we'll see whether I can support it in the, in the next 50 minutes. Uh, and I, so I call these, since they're so darn similar, I just call it small e and small b. Small b is easier to remember because it all has the same signs. And small e is, is a little trickier in that the a term is the one that, that flips signs. Okay, so um, again, we got to get rid of that gauge field, okay? And that way, our gravitons can travel at the speed of light for reasons that, that grad students would understand. And this is going to be a recurring technique. There's going to be no, uh, no one of those scalar terms. All those scalar terms would belong in that zero spot. They aren't there. This stuff is traveling at the speed of light. So that's good. OK, so we need an invariant. So what should we do? Hey, why don't we get another one of these b squared things, uh, the difference of two squares. Um, and e is positive this time around. Uh, and again, there's a perfectly valid three vector out there that I'm not going to work with. It scares me. Okay. Um, so what are we go what, what's our plan to, to derive it? Same as before. Okay. So slide looks similar. We're going to write out the, these two terms. We're going to multiply it out and we're going to form. And so we write it out. A uh, few signs change. And what's kind of funny about this is that the only terms that don't change are the mixed terms. Everybody, of the pure guys, they all flip, they all flip their side. It's like that. Um, what that means, we'll find out. So we, we get to write out our thing, and all we, we get to use the same slide again, and we just say, your pure term, flip your side, flip your side, flip your side, flip your side. That's very simple. And all my mixed terms, they stay the same. And so I put in my factor of a half, I put in my current coupling, and so now I said my Lagrange density is complete. I feel good, warm inside. And so now I'm going to apply oil to the branch. I'm going to pick out my phi terms. Oh, those are the guys all the way over on that side. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and crank this through. Uh, oh, I'm going to say, what, what's my calculus of derivatives? And it's like, oh, that was pretty easy before. It's pretty easy again. And then I get this row equals whatever. Um, and end up with a summary statement uh, that looks like this. But actually, let me go back here, because I don't think I commented this uh, anywhere, which is kind of too bad. It's like, um, we go, oh, back in high school, we learned about Newton's potential theory. That is Newton's potential theory, OK? Uh, sorry, it's not. It's more. These three terms make up Newton's potential theory. And the deep critique that Einstein even realized, as soon as he came up with special relativity, he was thinking about gravity, right? And the problem was, he said, 
problem with Newton's potential theory is if you change the potential, the, 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 that charge density at all, it has to go everywhere instantaneously, and that breaks my special relativity rule. And people who are scary bright, you know, Feynman, Weinberg, they know how to go literally from Newton's law to Einstein's theory of general relativity, his field of equations. I can't follow that, okay? I could just bow in respect for people who can, can, can do that. What's cool about this expression is it doesn't have that problem. See, because there are terms that depend on time. So I can, I can have be far more hopeful that this is going to be consistent with special relativity, particularly since I've used four vectors throughout. I mean, I've never not written a four vector. So, uh, and there's not that, that obvious flaw about changing in time that the row will, will lead to something changing instantaneously. All right. So um, now we go into an Ampere's Law sort of thing, and we focus on an AX term, and we see we've got this split things going on. But here's the beauty of, of symmetric curls. It's like they don't hurt our heads as much. Minus, 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 minus. Oh, I get that to the, cur the symmetric curl, the symmetric curl of, 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 uh, of, of an A, uh, which it turns out to be. Well, there's the details for the AX and our, our summary thing, saying, yes, that is the curl, the curl of B, and that, that is an, an EX, because it, we've got, and you just have to worry about, did, did I get the signs right, sort of thing, exercise. All right, so that's Ampere's law uh, for gravity. Looks awfully darn similar. So uh, Gauss is only about this small E, Ampere is, is, is about one. So that, in my opinion, is how to derive uh, equations that are related to uh, gravity. And that is not what this shirt is about. This shirt is about more than that, amazingly enough. Okay, so what it is... Oh, actually, let's, let's deal with the homogeneous uh, gravity equations. Um, again, the same technique. Except, that's not Lorentz invariant. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go, oh, that's, this doesn't work. Those guys aren't going to cancel. Um, I guess I don't know everything about my own equations. <laughs> and that's really the bottom line. I don't want to belabor the point. I, I, I'm hoping, you know, it's like, that, that's what, what the research is like. Dude. I dream of this. I dream of somehow taking a symmetric thingy and ending up with a zero there. When I find that day, if that day ever comes about, I think I might be able to get to um, homogeneous equations. But I'm not there. So it's just not there. Uh, and that's the bottom line for the homogeneous. So it's half-baked or partially baked. All right, so now we're going to try and derive um, the unified field equations. Those are the equations on your shirt. And you're probably getting used to my story. I'm going to plug a, a, a Lorentz invariant in or the Lagrange equations. Okay? So, I'm going to construct a complete set of first order <laughs> potential that changes. Um, but I'm going to use both products. I'm going to use both quaternions and I'm going to use hyper complex numbers. Okay? And, um, but this time, I've got that, that G field. And I'm not going to subtract it away. Oh, actually, I yeah. am. But <laughs> in a moment. Okay? See, see if, I, if I just crank these things out, um, this has got both orders. And what I do up, up there is I, I do funky things with where exactly I put the conjugates. Uh, that, that's when you're dealing with hyper-complex numbers. That's how you kind of do the same thing as changing the order uh, is with the training. Um, so I get a G field, what I call a G field here, small e, small b, and D over here. Now, that G guys, those guys are problems for uh, traveling at the speed of light, so why don't I subtract them away? Okay? And uh, this is, in fact, what is written on the back of the t-shirt. Okay? So I'm doing this all to get rid of that, those G things. But, well, well, not quite, right? I mean, if you just think about uh, the EM part, which would be right over here, that does depend on, on G, okay? So that means that does apply to particles that don't go the speed of light, like myself, okay? 
Um, then this, this stuff in here, if my claim about it being related to gravity, well, that actually is not gauge invariant, which means that it applies to particles that don't travel at the speed of light. But because I subtract one from the other, overall, it is invariant under uh, uh, gauge transformation. Okay. And that is, in, in essence, the magic that goes on with the Higgs mechanism. But what they do instead is they say, I've got all these symmetries, right? And what I'm going to say is my vacuum is a false vacuum and a spontaneous symmetry break. And that way, I don't mess up my, my symmetries, OK? This to me seems, I, don't, I have no false vacuum. <laughs> I'm a man without a false vacuum, without a false god. And to me, that, 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 that uh, really feels good. Um, I like that. All right. Um, so we're going to derive things very similar. We're going to start out by writing the Euler Lagrange, no, the Lagrangian. Um, and, and the thing is that the only the, the mixed terms were the same. I pointed that out. And the reason is, is that I'm going to subtract one from the other. And so I'm going to wipe them out. Wipe out those mixed terms. Give me purity. Now, here's another, another reason why, you know, I, I, I don't mind betting the house that this is right. Because you look at that and you go, that's beautiful. It's only the square terms, OK? It's only the square terms. I'm getting rid of the Higgs, <laughs> despite what we're trying to do at LHC. I don't know. I'm willing to bet the house. So um, we're going to work on the fee terms. And you go, hey, there's only one column of those. <laughs> this is getting easier, isn't it? Because, uh, oh, and by the way, the reason, uh, look, we simple, we used to, for, for Maxwell, we had one current coupling term, six derivatives. We narrowed it down to zero coupling terms and three derivative terms. Like, that rocks. Uh, and so there we go. Love loss. Love loss. Okay. Um, and so that's, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, it's just um, add those two fields together, take the divergence, and, and, and that's it. So now we do ampere, and ampere is easier to deal with. Okay, um, there's just three terms that, that, that have to be uh, taken derivatives of. That's what's on the front of the t-shirt. That's the other one. Okay, um, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, and I think I figured this, the, out and it's V V that whole no that's got that can't 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 be right can it? No it's not right. That's a that that value is to a scalar and this is a this is about a vector. So turn your notes. I will I think it's a time derivative actually is what it is. Okay. So um so Gauss Gauss is only about E plus E and Ampere is a, is about both. Alright. So um here do we go from here? We've got the field equations. Uh, and we got it the, the, the good old-fashioned way of plugging things into oil in the ground. Oh, the girl.